I'm the Maths Prof and in this video I'm going to show you how to calculate the nth term for a sequence of numbers. Now the nth term sounds a bit strange because nth is not really a word. It's just a formula that we use to help us calculate any number in a sequence of numbers. So n is just the position of the number. So for the first number, this is when n is 1, and for the second number in the sequence, n is 2, and so on. So in order to work out the nth term, the first thing you need to do is look at the difference between the numbers in that sequence. So in the first one, each time we're adding 3 to find the next term in the sequence. So if we wanted to find the next number in this sequence here, we would just add 3 to the number 11, which would give us 14. So to find the nth term, we need to use this difference number here. So because it's positive 3, I write down 3n. Now to find the remainder of this formula, we need to figure out how to get from this number 3 to the first number in our sequence. Well, to get from the number 3, down to the number 2, we have to subtract 1. So you're going to minus 1. Well, that's how to find the nth term. Now let me just explain to you why it's that. Remember what I said earlier, n is the position of the number. So let's just take the first number in this sequence here. So this is when n is 1, because it's the first number. Well, if we put n to 1 in this formula, 3 multiplied by 1 is 3, and if I subtract 1, I get 2. So that generates the first number in this sequence. Now let's look at the second number in the sequence. So this is when n is 2. So this time I'm going to change n to 2 in my formula. So 3 multiplied by 2 is 6, and 6 subtract 1 gives me 5, which is the second number in the sequence. So I can use this formula to find out any number in that sequence of numbers. So if I wanted to find the 100th number in that sequence. So I'm not going to write out all of these numbers up to the 100th term. I can use this formula to work it out. What you do is you just change that, num that letter n to the number 100 because remember that is the position of the number we're trying to find and then you would subtract 1. Well 3 times 100 is 300 and 300 minus 1 is 299. So if I was to write out all the numbers in that sequence up to the 100th term, that 100th number would be 299. Okay, let's have a look at the second one here. So this time, the difference between these numbers is 2. We're adding 2 each time to find the next term in the sequence. So to find the next number, if I add 2 to the number 10, I get 12. So that's the next term in the sequence. Now, to find the nth term, remember, we need to take this number here. So, because it's positive 2, we write down positive 2n. Now, to find the next part, the question you have to ask yourself is, how do I get from the number 2 to this number here, the first number in the sequence? Well, to get from 2 up to the number 4, I have to add 2. So, that gives me the remainder of the formula. But I'm just going to check that that definitely works. I'm going to try out a few numbers in this sequence, test them in this formula to see if it works. So let's take the third number. Okay, so position number 3. So here, n is 3. So I change that number to 3. So 2 multiplied by 3 is 6. And 6 plus 2, well, it gives me 8. So it worked for that number. If I use it for this one, for the fifth number, so when n is 5... 2 times 5 is 10, and 10 plus 2 is 12, which is the fifth number. So I know it works. So, again, if I wanted to find another number in this sequence, let's say the 30th number in this sequence, instead of writing them all out up to the 30th number, we can use this formula. So you would do 2 multiplied by 30, because n is 30, because it's position 30, and then we add 2. Well, 2 times 30 is 60, and if I add 2, it gives me 62. So that number is the 30th number in this sequence. All right, on to the next one. So this time, it's a little bit different, because we're not adding 3, we're subtracting 3 each time to find the next number in this sequence. So to find the next number, the next term, if I do minus 6, take away another 3, 
that gives me negative 9. So to find the nth term for this one, I have to take this number, so this time it's going to be negative 3n. And how do I get from negative 3 all the way up to positive 3? I have to add 6. So there's the nth term. Now I'm just going to test it for one of my values to see if it works. Let's just take the second one. So this is when n is 2 because it's the second number in the sequence. So minus 3 times 2, well that's minus 6. And minus 6 plus 6 is 0. So it's correct. Alright, on to the next one. This time we're adding 4 each time. So to find the next term in this sequence, I need to add 4 to this number here. So 8 plus 4 is 12. So there's the next term. To find the nth term, I'm going to write down positive 4n because we're adding 4 each time. How do I get from 4 to the first number in the sequence? I have to take away 8. So there's the formula. So this is an expression for n to find any number in the sequence. So again, let's just test it. I'm going to take this number here, the fifth number. So I'm going to change n to 5. So 4 times 5 is 20. And 20 take away 8 gives me 12. So it's correct. So let's say we want to find the tenth number in this sequence. I would change n to 10. So we do 4 times 10. Then we have to subtract 8. Well, 4 times 10 is 40, and 40 take away 8 is 32. So that is the tenth number in this sequence. Okay, and for the last one. This time, we're increasing, we're adding 4 each time. So to find the next number in this sequence, if I add 4 to this number here, I get negative 4. So because we're adding 4 each time, I have to write down positive 4n again. And how do you get from 4 down to the first number in your sequence? You have to subtract 24. So there's the formula for the nth term. Okay, so I hope that's clear. You now know how to work out the next term in the sequence, the nth term, and you know how to use the nth term to find another number in that sequence. So this only works, this method, for a constant difference. Notice how we're always adding the same thing or subtracting the same amount each time. When the difference changes, it becomes a little bit different and you can't use this rule. But that's something I'll explain in another video. So that's all for today and goodbye.